today about body measurements, how to take them, how to apply them, how to use them, and then how to change things within the schematic of your pattern. Um, I personally never follow a pattern exactly. I usually add some shaping for the places that I know I need it. Um, and, and because that's how I like to wear my knitwear. We're going to focus on taking measurements for a top. Uh, measurements for a bottom, you tend to need another person because it's really hard to, knit, to do an inseam when you're standing. Uh, you kind of need that second person to tell you what the measurement it is down at the floor. So without further ado, we're going to talk about the differences between measuring for the different sexes and for measuring for children. We'll start with children because there's really only one big difference. Toddler age and below, you have to be aware of head size because nine times out of ten you'll knit a beautiful sweater that can't fit over the head. Um, this usually has to do with either your bind off or your cast on, so let's make sure that we're doing those nice and loose. Um, and taking every advantage we can to maybe use a different cast on or a different bind off to make it that much looser. One of the best things you can do, especially if you're knitting for a baby that hasn't arrived yet, is to actually split the top and put a button in. So what you would do is, is the first two inches of the top, including the neckline, knit that flat rather than in the round. If you're on a knitting machine, you'll knit it one side at a time and then put a button at the top. And that just allows for extra flexibility to get a slightly larger head through. Um, because our heads don't grow a lot as we age and as we grow, babies tend to have almost a full size head. Um, which, you know, it's just, it's one of the things that is odd about humanity. When it comes to measuring for sweaters and tops, the most important measurement is going to be your bust measurement or your chest measurement if you're male. Um, when you're measuring a man, and I know it probably doesn't happen as often um, because men tend to buy their sweaters. They, they don't really wear cut handmade as much as women do. Um, the most important thing that you have to remember is to have them put their arms out. And the reason why is because when a man puts his arms out, he gets wings. Um, and the more in shape he is, the more obvious those wings are. Um, and you want to make sure that you're encompassing that in his chest measurement. That way when he's moving and flexing, the piece itself is not gapping and becoming too tight. Um, we see men all the time in dress shirts where when they do this, it gets so tight across the back that it almost looks like it's going to rip. We never want something like that in knitwear. Knitwear is not forgiving as it is. Um, it shows everything. It clings to the wrong things and hides the right things. So we want to make sure that we're working within that philosophy when we're working. Um, so make sure that when you're taking your measurements, you're A, giving them a little bit of ease, so you're adding to them, but you're also making sure that the measurement that you take is the biggest it can possibly be. Um, so for a woman, when you take your bust measurement, do yourself a favor wear your best bra, okay? And when I say your best one, I don't necessarily mean the most expensive one or that lacy one that your partner likes. I mean the one that makes you feel good. The one that lifts you up and makes you feel full and beautiful. That is your best bra because it's the one that you're probably going to wear more often, but it's also the one that you're going to wear out of the house. If you only wear sports bras, then that's fine too. But if you have that special occasion bra, make sure that you're taking your measurements in it. That way your sweater will fit regardless of what you have on under it. All right. Now when you take this measurement, it's very important that you make sure that you are straight all the way around. And do not make a common mistake, and I have seen it so many times recently on some of the knitting websites, where they're not giving you a circumference, they're giving you a width. Let me show you what I mean. If I measure from here across my bust line to here, that is 20 inches. If I do the same thing across my back, that is 17 inches. Okay, don't do it that way. Make sure you are taking full circumference measurements. So what you want to make sure is that you're straight across your back and you're going to come around the fullest part of your bust line. 
depending on your brassiere and how you are shaped, that is most likely going to be where your nipples are. Um, once you're here, pinch your measuring tape and take a deep breath that fills your bust. And let the tape measure slip. What that does is it bakes in a little bit of ease for you right off the bat. What that means is if you're rushing through the office, trying to get to that next meeting and you're breathing a little heavy that nobody knows what color your bra is, um, unless you want them to, of course. But then you're gonna add another inch or two to that measurement anyways, just so that you have a little extra flexibility. And ease is a personal preference. Some people like a lot of ease and a big boxy sweater. Some people like just a little bit of ease. So you, you, you need to work within what you want out of the piece. The next one is gonna be your waist. Now, most of the people that I have met and measured do not actually know where their waist is. So we're gonna go over where your waist actually is. And it's going to be different from body to body. Some people are high-waisted, some people are low-waisted, some people are mid-waisted. But there's a point on your body where you bend. And if you lean to the side, there's a point where you actually bend. And regardless of how good a shape you're in, there is a point where the skin from your rib cage touches the skin from the top of your hip. And it creates this little fold. That little fold is where your waist is. Now it is bigger or larger on some people. I have a very short waist. Um, and it is generally above your belly button. Now sometimes it is at your belly button. You're gonna find that more on men than on women. But what you want to do is measure at that point. And when I first started do, doing this, I would bend to the side and then bend to the other side so that I made sure I was straight and then come all the way around. Um, and if that's easiest for you, then by all means do that. Get you know your two-part calisthenics in for the day. The next thing that you want to do is take a deep breath that fills your belly. And we're doing the same thing that we did with our chest in that we're just baking in a little bit of ease. Now mine's not gonna move a whole lot. Um, so you're baking in a little bit of ease. Now, this obviously is more important for a certain sect of people. If you are in very good shape and you are rocking six pack abs, I'm jealous, but this probably isn't as important for you as it will be for somebody who has had children. Um, especially if you have had large children while you were quite small. Um, I know from personal experience, while I am relatively thin, what I have is a whole lot of skin from my stretch marks. Um, and some of you don't have stretch marks, and again, I'm jealous. Um, but because of that skin, I don't like the knitwear to cling there. So I always want to make sure that there's a little bit of ease through the belly area so that that shape doesn't get portrayed on the outside of my garments. Um, and conversely, if you're just not tight anymore or you are of a larger stature and more curvy, there may be parts of your body that you don't want knitwear to cling to. And we're going to get into how to get around that. I'm gonna bring in some of my friends, I'm gonna take their measurements and I'm gonna show you how to work for different body styles, um, which I'm really excited about if you can't tell. Um, the one thing that you do need to be aware of is you may want to do waist shaping, even if it's not in a pattern. Um, for me, my bust is larger than my hips, and I don't like a whole lot of sway through my hips. So I would be tempted, and I usually do, bring sweaters down from the bust line to be more in line with my hip measurement. And with that, what you need to know is the measurement from your, un, for, from your bust measurement down to that waist measurement. And from there, you can use your swatch and figure out how many times you need to decrease and how often. Um, it's a bit of math, but we'll get there, don't worry. Um, the next thing's gonna be your hips. Now there are two me hip measurements. There's high hip and there's full hip. And this is going to depend on what you're making and where you want it to fall. So for the purposes of a top, you probably want that full hip measurement. And that full hip measurement just barely encompasses the top swell of your bum. Um, this is an important measurement on sweaters because if you don't get it right, when you take a couple of steps forward, the bottom of your sweater is going to roll up 
to your high hip or to your waist because you don't have the flexibility in that area that you need. So let's start with that full hip measurement. Now the full hip is the widest part of your hips. Be very careful not to confuse that with your thigh. It is very easy to think that that top section of your thigh is actually your hip, but it's not. There's a junction right there where your hip socket actually is, but your hip is considerably longer than that place. And it's longer or shorter depending on your particular genetics. Now take that measurement and you don't have to do anything special with it at all because you can breathe all day long and your hip measurement won't change. So there's my full hip and then I'll come up here and get my high hip. Now the high hip is the very top of your hip bone. Um, and I'm off on that side. There we go. And again, you don't have to do any special breathing. But you do want to write these numbers down and you want to check them um, once a month, every three months or so. Um, and check them at different times of the month if you are female because your measurements will change based on your lunar cycle. Um, your bust, bust will swell, you may get a little bloated. So having an idea of your um, average measurements will help you produce knits that fit all the time. Um, so the next one's going to be center back. Now there are two measurements for center back. There's center back waist and then there's center back and that's center back is the full length and for the purposes of making sweaters I've always found that that, that full length matters way more than the center back waist um, unless you're making a crop top if you want to make a crop top that only goes to your waist then only measure to your waist so basically the rule of thumb is measure to where you want your piece to hang now on the back of your neck there's a knobby little vertebrae that sticks out a little bit you want to measure from the bottom of that down to where you want your hem. So just place your measuring tape there. Oops, make sure she's not twisted and then bring it down to where you want it. Um, I generally wear mine just below the pocket on my jeans. So for me, that's 28 inches. It's a whole lot of knitting that I have to do. Um, but I'm quite tall, so I expect those numbers to be like that. Um, if you don't want to go that far, then you're going to have to make a shorter sweater. The, the numbers don't really lie, uh, unfortunately. Um, generally, I tell people to put on their favorite shirt that falls right where they like it and then measure that. Never measure a piece that's lying flat um, because it, they have a tendency to distort and stretch as you're trying to hold it flat and then measure on it. Better to measure on your body. Um, it's also better to measure in the buff. Um, just in your arm undergarments because if you're wearing a lot of layers you're taking those measurements into account as well um, this is a worsted weight so it does add a little bit of bulk to my measurements I know what my measurements are so for the purposes of this it doesn't matter and I'm certainly not getting on film in nothing but my bra and underwear hmm. there's a couple more measurements that you need um, but the most important one is going to be arm length now this one can be tricky to do on your own, so I'm going to show you how I do it because I'm just used to doing it this way. If you need a buddy, grab a buddy. You're going to start by putting your measuring tape in your armpit. Not all the way up in there, but right about where that uh, you, would, you would take your sleeves off or start your sleeves depending on which direction you're knitting in. Put your arm down flat against the measuring tape and stand up straight. Now I'm your mother. <laughs> take your free hand and pinch the tape measure right where your wrist is. And that'll give you a fairly accurate measurement. This one's important to know so that your sleeves don't end up here if you wanted long sleeves or past your fingertips. You know, you can always cuff them, but you're not wearing hand-me-downs anymore. And if you're gonna spend the time to make a garment for yourself, do it the right way and take the measurements. And then do the math, which is the scary part. All right, the next one that you want is a wrist measurement. Because when you're decreasing or casting on for a sleeve, you want to make sure that it's not going to be some big bell-shaped sleeve, unless that's what you're going for. If you're going more for like a long sleeve t-shirt, you might want extra space. But if you want something that fits snug, you need to know what snug is. Um, so if you figure that ribbing is going to expand anyways, if you use ribbing, you want to make sure it's not going to, it, it's still going to sit nice and tight. And if you do a hem instead of ribbing, that's even more important to know. You don't want your hem to do a funky flare on that edge. 
Now the last measurement is the one that the men like. Um, and I know that sounds very sexist and I don't mean it to be, but every time I've had to measure a man for a sweater, they always kind of grin and chuckle at this one because you need a bicep measurement um, for multiple reasons. If you are a gym rat and you have large biceps, it might be nice to know that your sleeves actually going to fit and not stretch tight across your bicep if you have to pick something up. But there's a more common problem for knitters. Um, one of my favorite clients has it, and every time she sends me a sweater to block, she asks me to add a little extra room through the upper arm. And it's gravity. It gets to us all eventually, and we get that little bit of extra skin that kind of hangs down through here. If you have that issue, let's make sure that you're getting that in your measurement without lifting it with your measuring tape, because you want to make sure that you have plenty of room in there to be comfortable. And that's really what it's all about, is creating a, a piece that you love to wear. And if it strangulates you anywhere, you're not going to wear it, and then you have wasted a load of time and money to create a piece that mocks you from the closet. We don't want that. So, and this is why the guys like it. So what you want to do is just create a loop and slide it up on your arm. You want to get to the thickest part of your arm and put it on. I'm just putting it on loosely because mine's going to move because then you want to flex. And this is what the boys like, right? Because they like to show off just a little bit. Now mine is not huge. I have a 12 inch bicep. Um, one of my clients has a 19 inch bicep. So making sweaters for him gets a little tricky. We have to add a little bit in there to make sure that it's not seersucker tight around his bicep because he's a very physical person and is apt to be flexing or lifting heavy things when he's in his sweaters. So these are things that, that you can take into account before you even start knitting. All right, make a plan. Doesn't have to be a set in stone plan, make a loose plan but have an idea of what your body shape needs. If you are small busted yet hippie, knit to your bust line and then increase for your hips. And the reason why I say that is because if you have a larger hip than you have a bust and you knit to your hip, it's going to be so baggy on the top that it's not gonna hang appropriately on the rest of your body. If you are like me, slightly bustier than you are hippie, you may want to work through the bust line and then decrease a little bit. If your bust and your hips are the same size, you're just going to work straight. No extra effort needs to be put in whatsoever. But understanding your shape and understanding your numbers means that you can then make knits that flatter regardless of your shape, regardless of your size. And I find that that is the best thing about making your own garments.